Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm the Jess and Sunday Jess and today I want to tell you all about my first three days getting to my mission and getting into the MTC and all the craziness and emotions and the tears that came with it. So I started in the Leitma Peru Central mission for those of you who don't know and so I went to the Peru MTC. So my MTC experience is very different than the majority of you which will go to the Provo MTC um, which is a lot more calm and organized than the Peru MTC was and my whole trip getting there. But I wanted to kind of tell you guys what it's like, kind of the feelings that you're going to experience as you get on the plane, as you, you know, meet your companion and just all the fun and exhaustion that you're going to experience in the first three days. So I have my journal and I wanted to just go through and actually kind of just read and give you guys some backstory, going to put some pictures up on the screen so you get a little bit visual aid of what it was like my first three days in the mission field. So make sure you guys like and subscribe if you guys want more Sister Missionary content. I have a whole playlist right here all about that and you guys are gonna hopefully find a video on every single topic that you need and if you guys have any more ideas for videos that you would like me to make that you need uh, advice that you want leave them in the comments down below all right so let's get started hopefully i can read my handwriting because it's a little tear stained <laughs> no, i'm just kidding so got my plane ticket here and i'm gonna read you guys my horror story <laughs> oh my gosh I cannot believe today is finally happening. Today is the first day of my mission. I have a wonderful boyfriend, Eric Espinosa, whom I have dated for six months. Saying goodbye to him was probably one of the toughest decisions I have ever made. If you guys don't know, I ended up marrying this boy, so it all worked out. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, I have cried a lot the last few days. Yesterday and today have been so difficult, and I know these will be the toughest as I say goodbye to my family. My dad and my mom and my brother Clint dropped me off at the Reading Airport this morning. I cried as I hugged them and left. My brother Clint gave me some advice as I left. Number one, work your hardest every day. You won't regret it. And two, don't panic when you can't speak right away. I cried a lot as I boarded the plane. However, I experienced my first mission miracle. I sat down on the plane in tears when a young girl moved into the seat next to me. Immediately she started talking to me and I just spilled my entire life to her. It totally calmed me down and was the distraction I needed. We hugged as we left. I arrived in San Francisco eager to eat and sit in what I thought was my terminal. I go to board the plane and my ticket number was all messed up. So I had to run frantically across the airport trying to find the right terminal because the plane was set to leave in about five minutes. I was stressing to say the least. About 85% of me just wanted to lay down and cry and give up, but I just kept praying. Finally, after rushing through another security, I got on my plane. Just minutes to spare. I arrived in Atlanta and found Natalie Owen. Her and I were friends at BYUI our first semester and we have both been called to the same mission. We had a blast in the place catching up and meeting the other elders. I forgot to mention how I got into a random conversation with this guy from Germany about the church. It was crazy how already two people conveniently crossed my path. I bore my testimony to him and it felt great. Our flight to Peru was pretty long, but we arrived into the live and loud city at 2 a.m. Plus, all my bags arrived. After the craziest bus ride of my life and seeing the real ghetto areas of Lima, which was very humbling, I saw a boy no more than eight sitting in a street side curb in the middle of the night, and I could only pray for him. I instantly knew I was going to love the city when I landed in Lima. I cannot believe I'm a missionary too. I was impressed I didn't have a breakdown today too, besides the airport. Natalie and I found our room full of sleeping girls, so after rummaging through our suitcases in the dark, I threw a bottom sheet on my bed, stripped down to my underwear because it is so hot here, and I grabbed my blue blanket and fell asleep with my sweatshirt as a pillow around 3 a.m. <laughs> Alright, so that first day was absolutely crazy. I remember just literally running to the airport in my dress, my missionary dress, but without a tag, and my carry-on suitcase, and just trying to survive. <laughs> and I remember looking at a bench and just being like, I could not go, and I could just sit on this bench, and no one would know. <laughs> um, it's a little bit weird traveling when you don't have a phone, especially if you're like going international to an MTC. It's kind of terrifying. And so when I finally got to one airport where I was meeting up with my whole district, that's where I was able to meet my companion, which I kind of already knew, roundabout way. I had already known my MTC companion. We were friends at BYU-Idaho, which was super weird of all the people in the whole world, going to the same mission the same day. So her and I were MTC companions, so it was a little different because I already knew my companion and it was hard to call her Amana Owen because I knew her as Natalie. So anyway, that first day was super crazy and I remember just getting to the MTC, it was pitch black, like our bus driver didn't speak English, we had no idea what was going on. We are driving through a van like through the middle of the city at, like in the middle of the night and it was just 
an experience and we got to the NPC and I didn't have a clock so I didn't even know where we were supposed to be the guy didn't speak English so we didn't know what time we were supposed to get up it was just a whole thing and so I will continue with the second day <laughs> what did I get myself into why am I here do I really have to do this do I even want to do this is the church even true these are just a few of the questions that have been running through my mind today I honestly know it is the power of the Holy Spirit that I am even able to write about today and have even survived after a mere four hours of sleep, Natalie and I woke up to find only two other sisters in our room. Guess what? They only speak Spanish. <laughs> now, Natalie and I had no clue as to what time it was, where we were supposed to be, and what we were supposed to be doing. We got dressed and thankfully came across some American sisters in the hallway. They told us we didn't have breakfast for another hour, so we went back to unpack and finally got settled in. Gosh, I brought so much stuff. Probably too much. I felt so much better after that. After breakfast, which I did not have much appetite for, we went and received our name tags. It was so cool to officially be your Mona Stratton. I do have to say, I am exhausted and not in a very good mood. Throughout the morning, I was not feeling good about my decision to be here. I know that if I wanted to get home, I could just throw myself off Ramona Owens' bunk and hopefully break something. Oh my gosh. Okay. It is stressful though, and I feel like I am back in high school. We did practice some Spanish, and I can actually remember a lot, and that lifted my spirit a little, and I was able to write my family a little yesterday. We then learned all the mission rules, which was frustrating. I know I need to be celestially obedient and obey out of love for my Heavenly Father, as Eric told me. There was a quote I read today about once the rules cease to be an irritant, then I will receive blessings for obeying. I was really struggling with the fact that I am going to be here for a year and a half. Eventually, we did the investigator role play, and I did not want to participate. Before we begin, I just prayed that I would be comforted and understand my purpose as a missionary. Once the first investigator came in and she had so many questions that I knew the answer to, I received this overwhelming feeling of excitement to teach and share. Total answer to prayer. I'm trying to completely immerse myself and I'm actually having a great time speaking with the Latino missionaries and teachers. At the end of the night, we met with our branch presidency. He asked if I had any unresolved issues. I told him I, it, I just didn't feel like I was truly forgiven after repentance. He told me that if I have talked with my bishop and stopped doing the sins and all is well, and it is Satan putting those thoughts of doubt in my mind. It made me feel much better. We were able to go to bed earlier tonight. I am so excited to start learning. However, I just want to know everything. After an exhausting day and the longest day of my life, I was able to go to sleep. So, <laughs> the first day you get to MTC, you are with your district, which is basically like a group of like six to ten-ish missionaries. Um, you all won't be going to the same mission. A few of you might be, um, kind of just depends, but you will all be um, speaking like the same language. Like if you're a native English speaker, that's what your district's gonna be, and you're all gonna be learning Spanish. So, um, or whatever your mission language is that you are all assigned to. And so you go through like this whole orientation process, and I remember just hearing like all the mission rules and like reading the handbook and being like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember them all. How am I even gonna keep all these rules? That was really overwhelming. All right, so I remember the second day was so overwhelming, um, and you are just trying to yeah, just survive. <laughs> and, you, I was really excited to learn everything, but it frustrated me that like knowing that I had six weeks and that I, everything was just going to be like step by step. I just wanted to know everything at one time and yeah. And then I remember going to sleep the second night and you, it's so hard to get to sleep and anybody who's been through the MTC and had to learn a language can totally tell you this, that you can't go to sleep because the, like your mind is like half in Spanish, half in English, and just like trying to remember all the things that you learned today and just trying to like record it and digest it. And yeah, it is really difficult to get to sleep in the MTC. So onto the third day. It is amazing what a good night of sleep with an actual pillow and a good shower will do. I woke up feeling great and did not experience a single negative thought. I laugh more today than I have in a long time. The food tastes better and I am so much happier. Our district is hilarious and so is Elder Sosa, our teacher. I also feel great speaking Spanish. I love the challenge of attempting to speak to the Latinos here. We were also able to have a playtime today, which does wonders. It is so humid and I can literally feel the water droplets hit my face. We played ultimate football and we f it felt great to run. <laughs> Me and my companion learned today though that we don't have to follow each other into the bathroom anymore. <laughs> what a relief. All in all, today is great, but still a little overwhelmed with how much I want to learn. At least the desire is there though. Okay, then on to the next day. Is it bad I don't miss my family? I mean, I guess I miss Eric a little, but I know he would be proud to see me working so hard. His email he sent me the night before I left has helped me so much. Just immersing myself in Spanish. I love this language. I love learning new words and piecing conversations together. 
Today we had to wake up extra early to go to the Interpol for our visas. It was very interesting to say the least. <laughs> Cats and flies everywhere. I was able to speak a lot of Spanish, however, I thought today as Ramana Owen and I were preparing our lesson for our first investigator, Luis, that I had been sent to an English-speaking country. I would not have to grow so much. Our first lesson was hilarious. I could not imagine how awful our grammar was, but we made it through and taught Armando Marino about prayer and the importance of the gospel for families. It was an amazing experience. I bore my testimony of prayer to Armando Marino and I totally felt the Holy Spirit. I am having a blast with my district and others playing ultimate football. The food is great here at the MTC and I can't get enough of under the table butter, which is kind of like a little Peru like inside joke. And actually the food is terrible, I don't even know what I was talking about. I have yet to cry about home as I already feel like I have been gone for months. I love the sisters here in the MTC, they are all so nice and loving. I am stressed, not about the language, but about all the work we have. I feel there is not enough time in the day. I have come to realize how much I know about the gospel and how much Spanish I do know. I'm so grateful for this experience. Who Here's to the third day. All right, so that is my first three days. Obviously, it was getting a lot better, <laughs> and I started to feel more at home, got into more of a routine, and got to know so many of the sisters in the MTC. And the MTC is such a cool place because you really get to connect with all the other sisters there and they're all you're all in the same boat you're all struggling to learn a language you're all a little homesick you're all tired and it's just such a bonding experience and you get to see people work through trials and overcome them and be there to support them um, not only like yourself but also your companion and all the other girls and it's just a really neat experience that is unlike any other even very different than the mission field because in the field you know you're with your companion you might live with two other missionaries but other than that, it's not such a group experience like the MTC, and it's such a cool thing to make so many good friends, and then, you know, after your six weeks, everybody gets sent off to, you know, different parts of the country or the continent, just depending on where, what MTC you're in. So, that is kind of my experience. I wanted you guys to see that, like, even though now I talk about, you know, the mission is this amazing thing, there were points where it was awful and, and I wanted to go home and I didn't know if I could do it. And after just a couple days in the MDC, I was able to work through it and it was all okay. And they say that, you know, if you make it through the first week of the MTC, you're going to be totally fine. And after the first week, I was feeling very confident and learning and loving it and just embracing every single moment and difficulty that kind of came. So I want to share more moments like this. That's why I have this whole missionary moment series where I read things out of my journal. Let me know different experiences or things that you guys want to hear about from my mission journal. I would love to share them. And if you guys have any advice from your first couple days in the mission, I would love to hear it in the comments down below so you can share them with all the sisters who are headed out into the field very soon. All right, guys, that is it for this week's video, and I will see you next week. Bye!